Evening all. I have some reflections on today's uh, Women's World Cup fi final between England and Spain. And uh, I'm not going to comment on the quality of uh, the match or get into that whole debate about um, is women's football entertaining enough to sustain itself as a professional sport. That's a conversation to be had another time. I want to concentrate on a, a kind of hoary old chestnut that's um, put out by the progressive left and that's the lionesses are not ethnically diverse enough. Too many white English players in an England team. Fancy that. Not enough black players. Okay, so this was a line of argument uh, advanced on Sky News um, by some commentators. One of them who I recognise as the, the black farmer. I don't know the guy's real name, but he has a business called The Black Farmer because he's black and he's a farmer and he makes food products. Um, so they were saying there was not enough... Uh, black players in the team, you know, not enough ethnic diversity. And then there's a guy on Twitter with a few thousand followers called Paul Russell, who was saying the same thing. Um, and his line was that it, um, the England team, the current England team, didn't reflect the ethnic diversity of Britain. Uh, so, so I want to, I want to challenge. That. In fact, I challenged him directly on that and uh, proved he was talking total nonsense. So, there are the Lionesses squad that went to this World Cup. There were 23 players. Two of them were black, the rest were white. Um, so, that represents 8.6% of the team were black. Okay. Now, if you look at the UK population as a whole, 4.2% 4 4 of uh, people, citizens that live in the UK, UK citizens... Are black. So instead of black players being underrepresented in the England women's team, they're actually overrepresented. Um, if we were just to, ref if if the England women's team had to reflect demographically the country as a whole, there should be one black player in a squad of twenty-three, because eighty-two, eighty-three percent of the population are white. Um, so four point two percent are black. There's a large number that are Asian. So I'll, I'll get to the Asian part in, in a moment. So his, his claims and the claims of others who complain, and this gets into the newspaper every time the lionesses do well, um, the, the team is not ethnically diverse enough. But it is. You, know, you can only pick from the pool of players you have available. And if, you, if, you're, if the population... Uh, um, if an ethnic minority uh, represents 4.2% of the population, 4.2%, that's the total number of people you potentially have to draw from your pool, for your pool of players, um, assuming that enough of them um, decide that they want to become professional footballers and actually make the grade. So it, it just makes sense that the majority of players would be white just because the numbers, uh, you know, the number imbalance um, favours that. The other thing is that the England men's football team um, is massively overrepresented with black players, but nobody ever complains about that. Um, so that's complete bunk. So Paul Russell countered when I told him those, those facts. He didn't confront them directly, but he added, well, what about the Asians? Okay, you're not factoring in the, the Asians, you know, we're underrepresented nations. Well, yes, that's true. There are no Asian players, uh, Asian football players in this Lionesses squad, nor are there any Asian players in the men's squad. And if you had a look at Premier League football for uh, United Kingdom players playing in the Premier League who are from an Asian background, I can't name any. I mean, there might be some, um, but I can't name any. Um, so I doubt that there are any. But why is that so? Well, we're looking at class and culture here. That's the main factor why you don't have um, Anglo-Asian uh, professional footballs in the Premier League and then going on to represent England at football because um, there are other factors coming into play. So if you have a look at football, it is a working class game. 
So that's predominantly where the pool of players are going to come from. They're going to come from working class background. And so that skewers in favour of white players and black Afro-Caribbean players. They're going to be more inclined to play football. When we have a look at um, uh, black players, uh, where are their, their parents, their grandparents, the, the ancestry coming from before they migrated to the United Kingdom? Predominantly from Africa. Um, or the Caribbean. Now, Africa has a tradition of playing football. It's culturally, it's an important sport in most African nations. In the Caribbean, that's been more true the last 20 to 30 years. Uh, before that, in the 50s, 60s and 70s, cricket was the major sport. But um, I'd say since the 1980s, 1990s, it's been more... A uh, football has become more popular, more predominant. So, again, you've got this kind of working class background. They're more likely to become professional footballers. With the Anglo Asian population, cricket is the main sport, and you find that, that in club level cricket, I mean, uh, you could say there's over representation in club level cricket in in England. Um, but also in county cricket, number of Anglo-Asian players. Um, some go on to represent England um, in the various different formats. And that is because cricket is mainly a middle-class sport. And those players whose ancestry is um, Indian or Pakistani in particular, uh, to a lesser extent, um, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. That, so they're more likely to be middle-class and they're more likely to go into cricket rather than football. Um, so if you want Anglo-Asian players, Paul Russell thinks that the England team should represent uh, the United Kingdom as a whole. OK, well, he's got a, he's got a huge mountain to climb if he wants to get um, more young Asian men and women playing football instead of cricket or instead of other, other team sports. If... They want to play team sports as well. He's got to overcome this kind of uh, class and culture uh, difference uh, there. And he hasn't factored that into his thinking at all. So it's not racism. You know, I think the, the thing is, is that trying to attack the lionesses over this issue. Um, they're trying to find a, a racist angle, and there just isn't a racist angle. Because in the world of professional sports, in these big tournaments, particularly something like um, the World Cup, Football World Cup, huge sport, massive sport. But the men's game is massive sport. The women's game, less so. But it still had, you know, for tournaments, it has decent uh, viewing figures, particularly finals. And so you don't want to muck it up when you get to these World Cup finals by, by having diversity quotas and um, dropping talented players because, you know, you've got to put more people from a different background into, into uh, the team. Because there's too much, too much riding on success and failure in these big tournaments. Lots of money, lots of television rights, and the manager loses their job if they don't win or they don't put up a good show. They don't show kind of sporting progress. So, you know, merit has always been the benchmark, um, the, the metric that... Um, team coaches do now there's one example where there is a quota system in picking the international team and that's South Africa and cricket South Africa introduced a quota system in order to uh, achieve parity between the black players and white players what was happening was a lot of talented players um, ended up quitting South Africa leaving South Africa and qualifying to play for other countries because the quota system was keeping them out of the South African side. That's how come England got Kevin Peterson and Jonathan Trott playing for them. And it's also how uh, Australia got Marnus Labuschagne playing for them. So a lot of really talented South African players are falling by the wayside. They move to another country. They, they try and find a, a relative um, that has a connection to these other countries and they serve a qualification period. Um, so that's and um, if you have a look at the South African cricket team, extremely strong before the quota system came in, and it's been weak. It's been compromised since the quota system 
comes in. That's a, a, a regular criticism uh, made of the South African cricket team. But uh, it's highly disingenuous when Paul Russell says the um, the football team, the Lionesses, do not reflect uh, British society. OK, then, well, where are the university-educated middle-class players in the Lionesses side? He had, does, in fact, to... Um, racing um, he doesn't factor class into this at all that's n- not propping up his argument he wants to go on the racial lines it's been it can be demonstratively proven that there are um, more than enough black players in the lioness's side but that's you don't go by stats you go by uh, or you don't go by um, just pure ethnic stats you go by uh, merit and you, you, the only stats you should be looking at is uh, passes completed, goals scored. Um, you know, so you, you're looking at the biometric stats for the players. What are they contributing to the game? And as far as I'm concerned, the England men's football team, the England women's football team, and their managers are working to the competency metric. Sometimes they get it right. So you, you can argue about whether the exact composition of the side is correct. I think that in the... I don't know enough about the uh, women women's football team and the, the, at the club level to know whether the best 23 were selected, but on the surface of things, they all play for decent clubs, so there you go. I think knowing the men's team, that you can argue around the fringes whether Conor Gallagher or James Madison is better than Bikai Saka and, you know, who should play there. But I believe that at the last World Cup... Gareth Southgate picked pretty much the best 23 players in the United Kingdom. There could have been a number, uh, another five that people could argue over. Should it be this guy instead of that guy? But in the end, I think he did a pretty good job at selecting uh, an England squad. And, you know, the, the um, what you're arguing for in terms of drop this player and put that player in, so you're really arguing around the, mount, the margins. But I don't think there is a, a, a competency issue with the composition of the squads. So Paul Russell is uh, completely wrong on, on that one. But in conclusion, what I think Russell's done, which I find disingenuous, and what I think the Black Farmer's done and the other commentators, is that they're not using any kind of logic or uh, they're certainly not arguing on merit, meritorious grounds. Um, just how many people, how many black players do they want to see? How many Asian players do they want to see in the England side? It's not based on actual population. So when Paul Russell says something like, it doesn't reflect uh, British society, well, he's he's wrong because the team represents Britain across, well, England across the whole much better than he realises. The thing is, is that he's got an image in his mind of what he thinks the England team should look like. So he's only using his purely subjective, uh, not fact-based um, judgment on what he thinks the England team should look like. It's all subjective. It's all an image he has in his mind. And it's the same with the black barrister and the same with everybody else who's making the criticism about the lionesses being too white. It's all... Well, how many? Four, five, six, you know, put a number on it, Um, which they haven't done um, because they're not arguing from a position of facts. They're not arguing from a position of logic. They're certainly not arguing from a position of merit. So it's all completely bunk. And if you find somebody arguing that, you just tell them the facts. You tell them the facts, tell them the stats. And the final question you can put to them is, okay, so have a look at that Lionesses team. Who would you have dropped and who would you have put in in their place? So you want to drop a few white players. Who are those white players you would drop and who are those black players you would put in their place? And they won't answer that question because they're not really fans of women's football in the first place and they don't know any of the players. They don't know the clubs and they don't know the backgrounds of them and they certainly don't know what those players can do in a football match because they've never seen them before. And on that note, see you later.